Hello everybody, this is Steve Grizzetti, co-founder of MoviePix.com and author of the MoviePix.com Guide to Vegas Movie Studio Platinum, as well as the MoviePix.com Guide to DVD Architect, and here we are in part three of our eight-part series called Basic Training with Vegas Movie Studio Platinum. We finally got a project started in our media into the project. It's time for us to start building out that project. And for the most part, building your project is as simple as dragging your media files from the project media panel down to the timeline. Now once it's down to the timeline, you can start to work on it, and working on it not only means arranging the order of it, but you can also shorten your clips. You can edit them. And the most basic edit is the trim. To trim from media clip means to remove video from the beginning or audio, I guess, from the beginning or end of the clip. Now we can zoom in or out on our timeline in a number of ways. Uh, the simplest is to use the roller on your mouse, and you can zoom in and out by just rolling or you can use, once the timeline is selected, you can use the up and down keys on your keyboard to zoom in and out. So we've got a clip or an event on our timeline here, and it's longer than we'd like. We'd like to shave some of the ends off it. And you notice when I hover my mouse over the end of the clip, I get an indicator, a trim indicator, and the trim indicator is pointing to the left. If I move it just a little bit over to the right, you see it's pointing to the right. In other words, whichever way it's pointing, that's the clip it's going to trim from. So to remove from the clip here on the left, we simply click and drag and remove some of the video from the end of the clip. We can also do the same thing, uh, remove from the beginning of the clip or event. Now we can also slice a clip or split it simply by putting the playhead into a position and then coming down here to the bottom of the timeline and clicking on the split button and that cuts it into two pieces and we can of course delete one of those pieces or affect it in any way we want. Now you'll notice by the way the timeline has been reacting in a certain way in other words as I trim from a clip the events to the right have been moving left to fill in the gap that's called rippling and it works in two directions in other words it works as I trim an event and it works as I untrim an event and in fact if I were to grab a video clip and put it in between two clips you notice that the other clips to the right move off further to the right to allow it to uh, insert and rippling is turned on and off with this button right here on the timeline this is the auto ripple button I'm just gonna edge up the part of my program my interface right here because there's some things about this I want to teach you in just a moment rippling can be a little confounding until you get used to it at its most basic it's just allowing us to insert clips and then filling in the gap when we remove them. But things can get a little more complicated than that. I'm just going to add another audio track here by right clicking on the track header and saying insert audio. I need to do that because I'm going to add another video clip up above these videos. And then let me just widen this a little bit so we can see what we're doing. There we go. So now we've got video on more than one track. When your auto ripple is turned on, if I were to insert a clip right here between these two events, you notice that all clips or all events on all tracks move over to the right to accommodate it, to accommodate that insert. And sometimes I don't want that to happen. Let me show you uh, one of the situations where auto ripple can actually work against you and be a little bit frustrating. Suppose I want to move this clip to the end of my timeline. So if I grab this clip or event and drag on it with auto ripple turned on, look what happens. Everything to the right is behaving as if it's grouped together. So that's the auto ripple. Now there are some times when you want to turn auto ripple off and that's one of those cases. And if I just turn it off, you see I can now grab this event separately and drag it to the end of my movie. And then I can turn it back on again. Now there are settings within auto ripple also. And if you go to the little drop down menu, the little arrow to the right of Auto Ripple, you can see you can set it to affect all tracks, affected tracks, markers, and regions, and affected tracks. Don't worry about this middle one right now, but the main concern is do you want to ripple all of your tracks or only your affected track? What does that mean? Well, if I were to select affected track and then insert an event between these two events. Let me grab a longer one. Let's insert an event between these two events. You notice that only the track that I've added the media to 
is rippling. This upper video track is not. If I have it set to all markers and regions, then when I insert a clip or an event, everything kind of ripples. Now that's the basic concept to it. When you turn it on and when you turn it off is just something you have to deal with situation by situation. And as I say, it can be a little bit confounding, but it's a key part of working on your timeline. As I say, I generally work with it turned on, except when I turn it off. Uh, <laughs> it's something that's kind of a situation by situation thing. Now coming up in part four, we're going to apply effects to our movie. And as you see in Vegas Movie Studio Platinum, there's a simple way to do it and a more complex way. And we'll show you how to do all of those coming up in part four of our eight part basic training with Vegas Movie Studio Platinum. I hope you'll join me for that.